Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda, and this is Gizmo. We're the village's newcomers. We have a big show for you today. We're going to talk about things like what kind of shape are the golf courses really in? And how do you cope with that summer heat? Have we had significant power outages since we've been here? And with the intense storms, are you afraid of lightning? And do golf carts intimidate bicyclists on the roads? Mm. We're going to discuss these and lots more today, right here on Mailbag Monday. Send us your questions, we've got your answers, Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We're getting into summer. Each day it seems to heat up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday morning, the humidity was 87%. Right. We had to Google what is the average humidity or what's the, the comfortable humidity level in Florida. Yeah, I didn't know. We didn't. So it said between 60% and 70%. 65 to 75% is considered a good humidity. Well, okay. <laughs> so we were a little bit above that yesterday. But still, we got out and did a lot of things. Oh, I even weeded. She, she <laughs> uh, did a lot of weeding yesterday while yeah. I was out playing golf. Mm -hmm. Let's get to our shout outs. This is Brian and Amy. They recently celebrated their first anniversary here in the villages. They live in Rio Ponderosa and they'll be cruising with us pretty oh, soon. Oh, be right around the corner. This is Andrea, Fred and Beckett. They're from Hudson, Ohio, and they are showing us a picture from snowy Lake Erie. Mm. That's a great photo. <laughs> yeah. Beckett looks cool. Yeah. But I don't think that weather looks cool. Mm, it is cool, Jerry. It's snow. Very cool. <laughs> Here's Lori and Paula. We met them at Bell's Department Store. That's always fun. Uh -huh. They were on a girls shopping spree. That's always a fun day when they go out shopping with the girls. They're from Wisconsin and Illinois. And this is Judy, Steve, and Tina having a moment before lunch. Brian and Debbie have not moved into the villages yet, but they say that our video inspired them to use outdoor workout equipment in their hometown. Looking good. I wonder if our hometown has outdoor equipment. I'm gonna check on that when I go home next week. Jody and Cal are from Maryland, and they're hoping to move to the villages. Here they are having a ball in Sumter Landing. I think Sumter Landing is the square that you can have the most fun at. I think it's beautiful with the lake there and the lighthouse. It's just it, the ambiance at the Lake Sumter Landing. It is. The, you combine the lake and, you know, they even have a boat ride and, uh -huh. and they have Cody's and RJ Gators right there. And then they've got red sauce. and. Oh, you can see large turtles out in the lake. They come yeah, up to the side there. right there. That's and, a lot of fun up yeah, there. Yeah, it is. This is Lynn. Hi, Lynn. We understand you were brokenhearted when Diane and Robert moved to the villages. They're doing just fine down here, and they're having such a great time, and they're looking forward to you visiting. This is Kevin and Lori, and they're waiting to come to the villages. It's on their dream list. Kelly and Diane were recently here for a lifestyle visit. And while they were here, they went to a concert. And look at this. They're posing with Jay and the Americans. What a great group. Oh, man. I remember that when I was younger. Mm -hmm. This magic moment. Yes. Cara sing, Mia. Sing a little. Cara Mia. <laughs> I love that, uh, uh, that era mm -hmm. and those guys. Wish we'd have been to that concert. I wish we had too. This is John and Sharon who visited the villages a few weeks ago. And here they are at the Eisenhower Rec Center. That's a great rec center, and a lot of people like it. Uh, it has those, I'm going to call them mannequins. Is that what they are? I think so, yeah. Okay, and they, they've, they're in all kinds of military garb. Mm -hmm. You know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. They might even have a Coast Guard, I don't mm -hmm. know. And then throughout the place, there's lots of real mementos. I yeah, mean, military. flags mm -hmm. and things. Uh, I've got some stuff I'd like to donate. Yeah. So there, I'm going to look into look that. Look into that, yeah. From Paul and Karina. They're from Winchester, Massachusetts. Are bicycle riders intimidated by all the golf carts on the multi-use trails? I average about 11 miles an hour on my regular bike. I can imagine lots of cart riders in a hurry wanting to pass me by. We get questions like that a lot, and we get sad stories a lot where people, you come here and you're so happy, yes. and you're having a good time, and you're like Linda, you find yourself out in the middle of a roundabout in a golf cart by mistake. <laughs> 
<laughs> and people yell at you and you're crushed and yeah. she was crushed. Yeah. And she cried one time when somebody made fun of her parking. Yeah, that was a bad mistake too. <laughs> so you're going to get some. It, it seems like a lot of people are in a hurry. You know, it's a retirement community. You're not supposed to be, but mm -mm. that swimming class is getting ready to start. Yeah. Your tea time is in 15 minutes. Yeah. You know, you're late for dinner with, with friends. Hi, buddy. Just got to be considerate of each other. And uh, bicyclers and, and walkers need to just be very careful and aware of their surroundings. A bicycle must, in my opinion, have a rear view mirror. You yeah. should have a mirror. You've got to be able to see what's coming back there. Yes. And you need a bell. Anytime yeah. you're riding up and you've got walkers in front of you, ding, ding, ding. So they don't step in front of you because that could end up badly for mm -hmm. both people. Yeah. But you're right about the carts. They're going to want, they go 20. But let's face it, most of them go faster than 20. Mm -hmm. 23, 24, 25. And you're going 11. I'll tell you, that's a uh, recipe for danger. What you want to do is, if you're in a split lane of the multimodal path, where it splits, it's much narrower. Right in the middle of there. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody try to pass mm -hmm. you. Take up on that the split. whole road there. Take up the whole road. Mm -hmm. When you're on a wider area, hang over to the right and give them plenty of room to pass, which they will. And don't be discouraged when some jerk yells at you or makes a gesture. You know, it's, uh, it's going to happen everywhere, not just the villages. I mean, probably less here than it would anywhere else. Yeah. But give them room and take your time and be safe. Mm -hmm. That's our, our advice. Mm -hmm. We had a letter from someone that uses a mobility scooter. Mm -hmm. I use a class three mobility scooter. Will I be allowed to use it on the cart paths and trails? It has a maximum speed of seven to eight miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Great question. Take a look at this video. We got your question and the very same day, we were coming back from a golf course and this fellow was in front of us. And it looks like he's doing just great. Marty, he's one of our avid viewers, the Gringo Loco. And he writes, what are the conditions of the many golf courses during the summer? After the heavy usage during snowbird season, do they take a long time to recover? It's a very astute question there, Marty. Yes. You're exactly right. During December and January and February and March, virtually every tee time is full. So you have a foursome from morning till night on every course. Mm -hmm. And they trample that grass. Yeah. Their golf carts are driving on the fairways. It does wear the course out. Now, the snowbirds have gone home and we're starting to get those summer thunder showers and everything's greening up mm -hmm. and it's getting better. But you are right, in the very end of spring, they are yeah, worn out. They are. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're getting better and they'll be in great shape soon mm -hmm just in time for the snowbirds to come back in October and do it all again. <laughs> a similar question from Ted. Ted has an eight handicap. That's pretty good, Ted. Wow. How are the golf courses really? I've heard they're not maintained as well as they once were. Is that true? They get a lot of play and I wonder if they're worth the price of the green fees. Well, Ted, that's a good question too. It's, it's coming into late spring, early summer. They have just reduced the price of all golf here. On June 1st, the prices went way down. I'll give you an example. If you could wait till the third wave, which would start about 3 p.m., those prices are only $20 to play 18 holes. Half of that to play nine holes. So that's what we do yeah. quite a bit. You know, I'm not a great golfer, and I enjoy playing the executive courses, so I don't want to spend an arm and a leg playing championship courses. I do like to hit that wood, you yeah. know, the driver. Yeah. Uh, and that's usually best done on a championship course. Although I did play Bacall golf, golf course yesterday, yeah. and that, that has two par fours. But that's the max you're ever going to get out of an executive is two par fours here. So uh, the rates are down. 
The use is down. You can get tee times very easily now. The golf courses are getting to be in better shape. It's a bargain right now. Now, back during February, if you are a resident, I believe, just going to estimate, $60 to $65, somewhere in that range, to play golf, it's pretty high. If you're a priority member, you would get a discount. One thing I wish that they would do on all the courses is let the rough grow up a little bit. They're all about fast play down here, and they let that rough be cut so tight that there is no rough, you know, very seldom. The only rough you're going to encounter on an executive is probably the big pampas grass and plantings yeah. they put in here and there because you're never going to encounter long grass. If you have long grass, people stop, and we're amateurs, and, and there are people with even less experience looking for balls and holding up the course and stacked up so they keep the grass cut. People move along. Mm -hmm. We think the golf is great here. We think they take good care of the courses. Yeah. One nitpick I might have is you'll see clumps of invasive grass yeah. on the greens sometimes. We call that uh, what, broccoli. <laughs> the women say, there's the broccoli. Oh, okay. Like little bitty. Uh, yeah, little sprouts of bad grass. Now it's mowed fairly smooth, but it's on the green. You know, that's, I wish they would take a little bit better care of that. Another golf question from Rose and Richie. They're beginning golfers, and their concern is they'd be nervous paired up with anyone. We wouldn't want to hold anyone up that's experienced. Can you ask to play alone until you get better, or do you have to be paired with other people? Oh. Well, Rose and Richie, this is the best time of year for what you want to do. In fact, right. that's how we taught Linda. Yes. If you wanted to play, let's say, between September and April, you would have a tough time because mm. those courses are packed. But right now, what we did for Linda was go to the last tee time. We would find a course where the last tee time is open because you don't have time to get 18 holes in or, or you don't even have time to get nine holes in sometimes. Right. And so people don't want that tee time. But it's good for her because she could play three holes or five holes mm -hmm. and be done and nobody's behind you and nobody's criticizing. Right. It's really good. Yeah. And even the tee time's in front of that. Like, mm -hmm. like if the last tee time is 7.05, you know, there might be a tee time at 6.55 and at 6.45 and there won't be anybody there. So you can yeah. take the earliest tee time that you feel comfortable, right. go out there and, by the way, nobody cares how bad you play. No, no. You can play as bad as you want. Yeah. Just play fast. Yeah. You know, go to your ball and be ready. Don't stand by your partner while they hit their ball and then walk over to your ball and then line up your shot and hit your ball and then talk about it for a minute and then go up and try to find your ball and then wait till they hit their Keep moving. Yeah. Play ready golf. Play That's ready what we golf. called it. Ready golf. Whoever's ready, who's at their ball, go, go play. Don Yegley writes, have you had any power outages due to hurricanes, storms, etc.? <laughs> if you have, what was the duration? Thank you. No, we have not had any power outages from storms. We've had some very temporary ones, like 15 minutes or 30 minutes but nothing of any length. I mean, uh, none we can even severely pinpoint. We've never had to break out a generator or mm -hmm. when we don't have a generator, we left it up north. Everything's underground here, the utilities. Now the substations have towers. Right. And I think the couple of times that we had power outages was during high winds. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, but boy, if they had to go take care of it, they did it quickly. Mm -hmm. I was, we feel very secure here. We get the question once in a while, should we go and splurge for a whole house generator? Uh, you know, it's $15,000 maybe, and we've never used one, so it's up to you, but I wouldn't do it. This is from Christine. How much natural privacy can you put in your backyard to create a barrier? Basically building a fence with a bunch of plants and trees. Christine, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. Many times people would like to do this yeah. if you have neighbors close behind you. Some people with an outdoor patio will uh, put shrubs, let them grow up, give them a little bit of privacy. Here you see between two rows of homes, quite a large area. That's one of the bigger ones. These folks on the right have planted for privacy and the ones on the left have not. That back boundary, you know, your legal boundary, mm -hmm. is the thing that's gonna decide what you can do. If you have plenty of room between your house and that boundary where you can plant plants and they won't encroach on your sprinkler lines, right. 
you know, you can probably do it. You have to get permission though. You have to take a site plan and just tell them what you want to plant. I want to plant podocarpus here, five of them, evenly spaced. And, you know, they'll tell you how far they need to be off the line. And you can do it. We see many people with privacy, with bush privacy bushes. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a perfect example of how people divide their yard from a neighbor. In this case, we're at one of the postal stations, but you can see the beautiful shrub all the way around. In fact, forming that privacy fence. Now they can only get up to a certain height and it's not that high, but that's something you'll see all over the villages. I think it's like eight feet. People create uh, their own hedge or uh, fence out of landscaping. Mm -hmm. Another golf question. Stan writes, I know you've mentioned the one driving range where you hit the balls into the water. That's mm -hmm. Sarasota. That's right. My question is, do all of the golf courses have driving ranges and practice putting greens to get warmed up before hitting the course? Great question. You would hope so. Mm -hmm. Now, driving ranges, there are only a few. I think there are three in the village, and mm -hmm. I could be wrong on that. Yeah. Sarasota. Sarasota, Palmer Legends, and maybe Lopez. Yeah. Stan has a good question about golf. I know you've mentioned the one driving range where you hit balls into the water. My question is, do all the golf courses have driving ranges and practice putting greens to get warmed up before hitting the course? There are a few driving ranges. Um, I know one at Palmer, there's Sarasota that we mentioned, and uh, maybe Lopez, but most of the courses do not. Some of the country clubs will have a net though. They'll have a little box with net where you can actually tee it up and hit your driver yeah. before you go out and play. So you can drive before you play at most of the uh, country clubs, if not all. And putting greens. There is generally a putting green at every course, but not all. For example, Palmetto, one of our favorite mm -hmm. executive courses, yeah. does not have a putting green. Yeah. But most of the others do. And sometimes two courses like Bacall and Bogart will share one because right. they're right close together. And that happens like Escambia and Okeechobee. And, uh, you know, that, that's, yeah. there, there are places to putt. Sometimes those, those putting greens are closed for maintenance, but usually you can do that. You'll, you'll learn once you get here which ones have a putting area and which ones don't and where you can go. For example, Sand Hill doesn't have a putting green, mm -hmm. but its neighbor Turtle Mound does. And right. so you can put a turtle mound yeah. and drive one minute to yeah, Sand Hill. Some of the country clubs have, like Bonifé, they had a, a, a pitching area, oh, too. Yeah. Yep. There and also at Sarasota, there's a pitching place, too. And you, even a sand trap at Sarasota. And turtle mound. I mean, you, you, can, you can chip, but they'll have a sign that says knee high and lower. So you okay. can't practice your flop shots or mm -hmm. your lobs, but you can chip on a lot of the putting greens. Yeah. Not all of them. And there's that... Uh, putting, not putting, but a sand trap at Sarasota, which is kind of fun. I need to get it over there and practice that. Sarasota is <laughs> a practice facility. You'll have a chipping green, yeah. a putting green, a sand trap, right. and you can do all that. Mm -hmm. Kimberly asks, does the activity fee include the pitch and putt or the driving ranges at Sarasota Golf Center? Good question. Because when you're not here, right. you don't know. You don't, you know. don't know what's included. Right. Like, well, I, I thought they had gyms with mem you know right. that, that you, you could go, go in and use machines right. when you don't it's not included mm -hmm. so here you're you're partially right the putt and play the pitch and putt free that's part of your amenity it's not an activity fee it's an amenity fee all the driving ranges are free for you to use but you have to rent your balls you have to to go put a token yeah. get a small bucket of balls or a large bucket and you can go mm -hmm. go and hit so the driving ranges are not included, but the pitch and putt, the putt and play, they're all part of your regular golf. Steve, Robin, and Stella Rose write, we have a question. Are there any storm shelters or safe places to go if there's an imminent tornado? Good question. Now we had David Casto here. Uh, he's the emergency director of Sumter County. Mm -hmm. And he told us basically, your best bet is to find the safest spot you can find in your home because you're not gonna have time to get to an emergency center. There are some, like the Wildwood Community Center, I think right. has one. Right. You look these up on your own, don't count on yeah. me. But we could never make it there in, in, no. if there's a tornado. Tornadoes no. are unpredictable and they just, yeah. you know, if you have a tornado uh, warning, then you know one has been sighted, but you don't know where it is. 
And so you don't want to get out in your car and drive no. three yeah. miles to it. Uh, so we have a place picked out. Our place is going to be our interior bathroom, no windows, good bracing. And uh, we'll go in there and, and we'll take our phones and we'll be in there scrolling mm -hmm. and looking. And, but I wouldn't to count on uh, being able to go to an emergency shelter. One of our friends from across the pond, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. He writes, greetings from Ireland. We love your videos. I'm so tempted to do this with an Irish accent. <laughs> you three are the best. Keep up the great work. And then he says something uh, Gaelic there, I guess. <laughs> By the way, are there many from the outside, outside of North America living in the villages? Well, if you watch our show, you know that Great Britain sends us quite a bunch. Yes, they do. And Australia and Canada, for yeah. sure. Yes. And we've known people from Puerto Rico and from, Cuba. although it's America, Cuba. and from Cuba and South America mm -hmm. and probably a whole bunch more. We, yeah. But that's, that's always really fun for us when we hear from people like you, Patrick. So thank you for watching and thank you for writing. And come on over. Yes. We had a letter this week asking about our fear of lightning because we're coming into thunderstorm season, mm -hmm. hurricane season, and the lightning strikes here are very impressive mm -hmm. and dangerous. Yes. So we did a little research, and I, I have some, some research on lightning strikes here. And in fact, we're toying with the idea of getting lightning rods on our roof. We're in the process of evaluating uh, whether we need it and thinking about the cost and yeah. all those things. So we're researching that. But it's rare for a home to be destroyed by lightning here. What's more common are the surges caused by yeah. lightning strikes that destroy your electronics. The electric companies are offering an in-home surge protector with a monthly charge that they will come and actually install into your power box, your, your electrical panel, that are supposed to stop those power surges from destroying your, your expensive electronic equipment. But there are many storms here in Florida where you're going to get lightning events. The Village's Public Safety Department responded to 17 lightning events in 2021. Mm -hmm. This is from the Village's News. That's four less than the year before. So 20 to 25 a year events that are dangerous enough or severe enough that the fire department has to respond. Yeah. Yeah. Of those, there were no fires, uh, there were no holes in the roof, but there was severe electronic damage, like we said, and there was one where the thermostat, like we have, was actually blown off the wall. Oh my goodness. That news report goes on to say that there were only 11 fatalities in the United States in the, uh, in the, the year, you know, which was a record. Uh, before that, the record had been 16. But mm -hmm. when you think about a country with 300 million people, mm -hmm. 11 people were killed by lightning. Mm -hmm. Still, it's important to those 11, but it's, yes. maybe we worry about it too much. However, you know, they say to take cover. Don't be out on the golf course in a lightning right. storm. Don't be standing near a tree. I've seen some really graphic uh, yes. pictures. Yeah. But yeah, we have lightning. It can be quite severe. We have thunder that will knock you out of your bed here. Yeah. <laughs> it's loud. But uh, we're not too concerned, but we are investigating getting those lightning rods on the roof. We'll let you know what we find out about that. Jay and Maria McDermott write, how deep are the ponds around the villages? And do, do the villages stock all of them with fish? Our home backs up to a large pond in Chitty Chatty, and we wonder how deep it is and if it will become good fishing in the future. It's not very deep, is it? Usually the retention ponds are not very deep. Um, I've had the kayak in some of them, and they've been about eight feet deep at the deepest point that I've found. So th that's not too awful deep. This is one of the larger retention ponds in Charlotte. This one is stocked for fishing. It's not too deep. It has a flat bottom. Very few features in one of these uh, retention ponds. So it's not ideal for fishing as we know it up north. No big logs, no structure. But there are plenty of fish in there. I'd estimate the depth to be about eight feet. And of course, less as you get toward the edges. 
That's just a guess, a guess that I've made from fishing in here and also putting a kayak in and paddling around. I don't think it's too awful deep. But yes, the village's fishing club is instrumental in mm. building a fishery here. And so they do at they times stock, stock ponds. Yeah. Most of the ponds here cannot be fished though. None of the ponds in the golf courses can be fished. Lake Sumter cannot be fished. Ho uh, ponds that are surrounded by homes cannot be fished. So you have to find a pond yeah. that has road frontage in the villages and you can fish the road frontage. You can't encroach on anybody's property, no backyard. but you can do that. And I think that they have made attempts to stock most of those, although I'm not positive about that. What kind of fish can you catch in the village's ponds? I have had good luck catching bluegill. Mm -hmm. A couple of uh, fish that we call red air in Indiana, you might call it shellcracker. Uh, <laughs> there are also some, uh, a few crappie, catfish. a lot of catfish. Mm -hmm. Of course, everybody's after the largemouth bass. Yeah. And uh, we haven't gone bass fishing a whole lot because frankly, fishing from the roadside is not great for, for bass fishing. I'd like to be able to get on a boat and motor yeah. around and, and do that. But there are fish, some of the ponds are stocked, and you are welcome to fish them, but you do need a fishing license. If you're 65 or over, it's free. From Paula and Ed in Ohio, Florida is hot, super hot in the summer. How do you beat the heat when it's 90 degrees with high humidity? Isn't it miserable? Well, first off, there are a lot of hot states in the United States. Uh, southern states are known for being hot, and yes, we do uh, have to take care of that situation. We wear thinner clothes, we use a lot of sunscreen. Well, Jerry covers his arms so he doesn't get burned, but we take a lot of ice in our golf carts and water and uh, to keep us cool, and even towels that are doused in water. We try to golf, I try to golf early in the mornings. Uh, what else, Jerry? Well, I mean, it's hot. Yeah. I tell people, it's hot. Yeah. Indiana has more 100 degree days than, than we do here. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But we will have a long stretch of oh, hot, hot days, days. Yeah. with high humidity. Right. Some days you walk out that front door, it smacks you in the face. <laughs> that humidity is, is pretty bad. Yeah. We try to stay cool. We, if you go somewhere in your car, you have air conditioning. You get where you're going, you walk through a hot parking lot, you go into somewhere that's air conditioned. Right. The golf cart. Anytime you're moving, put that front window down and feel that breeze, that's good. Mm -hmm. When you stop and you, you hit the ball, you're hot. When you get back in your golf cart and you roll, you're, you're cool again. Mm -hmm. She has a beautiful Breeze Easy fan, or is it Easy Breeze? I don't know. Breeze Easy, I'll say, <laughs> in her golf cart. You turn that on, it'll, it'll mess your hair yeah, it's up. It's above, and I just turn on the thing and it just shoots right in my face. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> but during two o'clock, one o'clock, three o'clock, summertime, Kick back, you got a good air conditioner in your house, mm -hmm. watch some TV, read a book, yeah. uh, do your arts and crafts. All right, your genealogy. Genealogy, <laughs> any of that, all the above. Go to the wood shop. Yeah. Go to the wood shop and create something. <laughs> so there are things to do. You can find activities to keep you busy during the heat, but make no mistake, it gets hot. All right, partner, you have been a good boy as usual. You always are a good boy. And you are good. Let's see what you have today. Hi, everybody. I think I need an AJ. 
agent. Even Winnie the Pooh has an agent. He says, show me the honey. Show me the honey. <laughs> you know what the janitor said when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies! Get it? Supplies! <laughs> hey, do you know why you can't hear a pterodactyl go to the bathroom? Because the P is silent. <laughs> well, you never let us down, buddy. That was good. You're a good boy. Yeah. That's going to do it for this week's edition of... Mailbag Monday. Thanks to everybody that came along with us today. We hope you enjoyed it. Be sure and tune in on Thursday. I'm not sure what Thursday's show is going to be yet. I have three or four shows in the works. We'll have to see if any of them come out worth showing you. <laughs> they will be. If you liked our video today, please press that like and subscribe button and share it with your friends. And if there's a little bell in the corner there. And if you hit that, it'll notify you of upcoming videos. Until next time. See you when you get here.